welcome to the Switch for Good podcast. I'm Alexandra Paul here with my co-host, my wonderful co-host, Aww. Dottie Bausch. <laughs> Hi, Dottie. Hello. Oh, my goodness. So we are going to curb the chit-chat today like sometimes we do when we have an incredible guest <laughs> in the studio. Uh, no, I, not that when we chit-chat means we don't have a good Thanks guest. for that disclaimer. You're right. It is so very true. <laughs> all, the, all our guests I mean, are nothing by that. Bit, like we chit-chatted before we'll go, oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, we just want to make the, the most of the time because she right. was lovely enough to uh, drive down here from, uh, from Hermosa. With a seven-week-year-old baby at home, too. Yes, so, so big Not kudos. home alone, though. The baby <laughs> right, is... is <laughs> like someone's watching the baby. <laughs> we don't have kids, so it's like, no, you can't leave them at seven weeks. Um, so, yes, it's... it's uh, Our guest is Cara Lang Romero. And I am a big fan. I have been a big fan for a long time. And um, Cara really stepped up to the pay- plate uh, in um, 2018 when Switch for Good was just getting started. And really all it was was an idea to put a commercial on the closing ceremonies, the 2018 Winter Olympic Games, with uh, six dairy-free athletes that basically wanted to stand up and say, hey, cow's milk is not a health food and it is not what we use. It's not what we drink. It's not what we eat to um, produce premium performances and, and win medals. And um, so I knew a couple uh, dairy-free Olympians, but not too many. So when we decided to do this, it was like I had to hurry and mm-hmm. gather the uh, Olympians as we only had about two weeks to shoot this to then oh, wow. um, get it edited and get on air. So Brendan Brazier mm-hmm. connected me with you and, uh, I called Kara and she did not hesitate for a second. She was like, I'm in, I'll be there. I want to stand up. It's time to tell the truth. Um, And she did it with such grace and poise and just passion. And while we, after we shot the video um, for the commercial, we shot another uh, video with just Kara. Uh, her really telling her story. And I want to share that with everyone now. It's only about two and a half minutes, but it really goes into... um, Cara talking about her journey away from cow's milk as an athlete, which I'm going to intro after the video so you guys really know what an incredible athlete and Olympian she is, um, but also reveals your journey um, moving away from cow's milk and really understanding why cow's milk is so bad as a mother Mm -hmm. um, when your first son, Sebastian, was born. It's beautiful. So, Miguel, can you uh, roll the video? I hate the idea of young kids watching the Olympics, watching their heroes, and in between the competitions being fed misinformation and lies, um, telling them that in order to get there they have to drink milk. The ads that you see during the Olympics created by the dairy industry to promote drinking milk to me are, are sad and disappointing. My name is Cara Lang Romero and my sport is soccer. Probably the first major career highlight would be playing in the Women's World Cup in 2003. It was huge for me because I knew it was all over ESPN. That's so memorable for me because we made it to the semifinals and we ended up losing in the last few minutes of the game of the semifinals, but I just remember feeling so close to going to the World Cup finals at such a young age was my motivation going forward for the rest of my career, basically. I never forgot that moment. I grew up drinking cow's milk. I come from a family of dairy farmers. You would think it would have been hard for me to turn my back on it, and I realized that it wasn't the best thing for me, but um, once I stopped, I didn't miss it at all. The biggest way that I saw my performance change when I dropped dairy was in my recovery. I knew I felt like I had a lot of energy but I think the, the biggest moment for me of validation was probably when I had a massage therapist who worked on me every day for years before I cut out milk and then for years afterwards as well. And she said that she could notice a difference just when she was treating me. And she said there was less gunk for her to work through to get to my muscles and to get my, my body flushed. Cow's milk, I think of something that's for baby cows and this This idea has never been more evident to me than after giving birth and nursing my own child and having this perfect food that is meant for him exactly, specifically him, not just any baby, but this baby. I think I would wanna tell future potential Olympians that they should try something other than cow's milk, that that it's not necessary. In fact, 
ditching it would actually help them. Switch for good means for you, for your health, for the planet, for the animals. It means so many things to me. I made the switch for good. Thank you. Awesome. I um, have so many uh, thoughts and questions to dive into just from that video alone. But um, as I mentioned before, um, Cara is a, a, a world-class athlete, Olympian, and uh, also um, is a business owner and a mom. So I just want to let our audience know a little bit more of the uh, the details and the depth um, of those things. So, Kara uh, started her professional soccer, soccer career early, becoming the youngest woman to join the Canadian women's soccer national team in 2002 at only 15 years old. She went on to play in the 2003 and 2007 FIFA World Cups and in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. She's also had a successful career in sports broadcasting and now runs her own nutrition and wellness consulting company, KLR Wellness Works, which is a lifetime dream of hers. Uh, through this venture, she launched her first plant-based recipe ebook earlier this year, which is on her website. And uh, if that wasn't enough, she's also a Yoga Alliance certified teacher and has kept up a diligent yoga practice for over 15 years. And to top it off, as I mentioned, she's a mom to two little boys, Sebastian and Diego. Sebastian's three and a half, and Diego is a whole seven weeks old, as Alexandra <laughs> mentioned, uh, and still manages to look super glam. So we would like some <laughs> tips on that before we uh, leave here today. So thanks for driving down. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, go ahead. Well, yeah, I just I, I f know that you started your plant-based journey young mm -hmm. you, you've been vegan for over half your life yeah so you start you're you start things young because you also as a soccer player didn't you start you joined the national team at 15 yeah i i was 15 um my when i was first called into the the full women's team and um i think i might still be the youngest player to have scored a goal in a fifa match so um the players are getting younger and younger there's uh -huh. younger young players on the u.s women's team now too and on uh, many of the teams around the world but um at that time it was mostly you know the average age was probably about 25 on the on the national wow team, so. 10 years younger when did you become vegan um 17 17 yeah so. i was uh living in vancouver i'd already moved across the country to play soccer um to be closer to the national team i'm from toronto and i had moved out to vancouver so i was already living on my own and cooking for myself um and actually i was at the warp, warp tour music festival uh i went to the PETA booth and i picked up a dvd it had a bunch of slaughterhouse um videos yeah. on undercover videos um i watched it on a plane with my team on my laptop um and I said, when I get off this plane, I'm never eating meat again. And I did. From that day on, I never had meat ever again. I, I wanted to try being vegetarian for six months to a year before I went fully vegan because I thought that it would be a long process and that it would be hard. And within a few months, I realized the only dairy that I was consuming at that point was um, ice cream. And I was like well, I can cut that out because there was soy ice cream available at that point. Nothing like there is now. There wasn't the cashew milk ice cream and almond milk ice cream, but soy ice cream was good enough. And so that was the last thing I cut out. And it was within probably about three months, I was fully vegan and I haven't looked back. Did your teammates have, uh, did any of your teammates have a similar uh, experience watching it or? I had a teammate um, who probably about a year before I watched that DVD, she was vegan and, and I was always asking her questions and she was sort of weary about giving me all the information. She would always say, are you sure you want to know this? Are you sure you want to know? Because and she was afraid you'd be freaked out about the well, like, cruelty to animals? Or yeah, and I, basis? the cruelty aspect. Uh -huh. I think because I was so young, she didn't want to influence me in or, you know, show me anything maybe I wasn't ready for. And so I think it, it I, th I think the way that it happened was probably better where I sought out the information myself and I saw it with my own eyes rather than, you know, an impressionable teenager um, being influenced by somebody that they really look up to and maybe doing it for that reason because now it was my why. You know, I had my own why. I wasn't doing it because it was what was cool or trendy or somebody told me to do because when that 
when it happens like that, it never sticks. That's why you can't force someone to go vegan. I've learned <laughs> in, in my 16 years. <laughs> you can't go vegan for somebody else. Um, and so I, with that DVD, seeing those images that could never be erased from my mind, I had my why. And I've never lost that why. You know, I, I, I really rarely ever watch footage like that ever anymore because I don't need to. Once you've seen it once, it's sort of ingrained in your in your mind. Yeah, you don't need to keep press and play. Mm -mm. It's like got it. Yeah. Not in, in risk of going back. In um in the video you specifically say that you hate the idea of young athletes being sold the idea that milk is good for them. Mm -hmm. What what did you mean by that? Well I, I just it's it's a lie. It's a lie, and, and it's just sad to think that this thing that is actually harming us and detrimental to your health is being sold as the ticket to, <laughs> to, to achieve your, your goals. Um, and without it, you'll have weak bones and you won't be able to survive. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, not only the ticket to, to reaching the Olympics, but just the, tip, the, the, you know, the answer to overall health and to thriving as a human being, which is so completely false. Um, you know, and as somebody who has two now thriving babies who will never consume cow's milk, you know, and, and my son is, he's three and a half and he wears size seven clothes. He's an absolute monster, <laughs> like monster. It's Whoa, unbelievable. he grew without cow's milk? Amazing. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, he's huge and he is not missing anything. He's not missing out on anything. And, and I think, you know, he is the perfect testament to um, a plant-based diet and, and, how we do not need cow's milk in any way, shape, or form. What do you say to the the other adults who say, "Oh, you can't you can't subject your son to veganism. That's just wrong. He's going to be unhealthy." Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think at this point there's just so much research out there that I just point them to the research and and show them that a, a well planned plant based whole food plant based vegan diet is absolutely perfect for you know, anybody in any life stage and um, from toddlers to to adults. It's just the, the information is out there and, and it really can't be refuted at this point. When you say well planned mm -hmm. though, do you do you feel like you have to plan more than the I don't think so. Who wants to give her, her um, children a really healthy diet. No, because f a really healthy diet that's not plant based needs to be planned as well. Yeah. Anything healthy sort of needs yeah, to be planned. Yeah, you need in our to society. think about it. You yeah. need, if, it was yeah. unhealthy, if you're not going through the drive through, you mm -hmm. have to plan. Exactly. There are so many landmines that you need to avoid in society when it comes to health and, and misinformation and, and trends that people, you know, that are packaged up as like the new health craze and so navigating that whether you're plant-based or not requires some work and I think um, you know as as moms creating a healthy environment for our children it's, it's going to require work whether or not it involves animals mm -hmm. consuming animals so in the video you um, make uh, a reference to um, really kind of um, the light bulb almost going off for you in terms of when Sebastian was born and you and you began to breastfeed, you recognized that this fluid that your body was making was very specifically uniquely for Sebastian and Sebastian only. So um, take me through that recognition and you were already plant-based for many years mm -hmm. before that, but you had a, a, a pretty um, awakening moment yeah. in that. Ex explain that to us. So, when I found out I was pregnant, I knew, I always knew I wanted to breastfeed. I wanted to have a long breastfeeding relationship with my baby. Um, and I knew drinking cow's milk, in my mind, in my belief is that it was wrong. I knew it was wrong. And to me, it was cruel. Um, but I didn't really ever understand that relationship between the mother cow and her baby cow. And, and the idea that breast milk is created for baby, human breast milk is created for that baby specifically. I started learning all these um, facts about how um, if the baby is sick, you know, they, there's a the relationship when they're feeding, they can tell the mother, um, 
you know, there's information passed from them to the mother about exactly what they need that will help them heal from the sickness mm -hmm. in, in, that, in that very exact moment. Um, and the composition of the breast milk will changes. Change. Absolutely. Yeah, it changes for, you know, how old they are, changes for what they need in that specific moment. If they're suffering from something specific, it will, it will produce exactly the right formula for that baby in that moment. And thinking about that and also just thinking about how hard breastfeeding is. Breastfeeding is not easy. Um, it, it takes a physical toll on you as a mother and it's work. You know, the idea that like spilt breast milk, like, you know, don't ever cry over spilt milk unless it's breast milk because it's, <laughs> you know, it's devastating if you waste one drop of your breast milk because this is something you worked for and you created with your body and your blood and just all the things that it takes. You know, you have to maintain a healthy diet while you're breastfeeding. You have to stay hydrated. You have to um, try to be as stress-free as possible to keep your, your production up. And there's just so many factors that go into it. And to think that we have this idea that, that cows are producing this for us, it's just wrong. You know, like I just finally understood, like, this is my breast milk. This is for my baby. And the idea that we would steal it from, you know, another species. And, and then the idea I, that I never considered as well was that, baby cows are separated from their mothers, you know, within a day. And mm -hmm. to think of my baby being taken away from me, you know, like I get emotional just thinking about it, talking about it right now. I, I want to cry. Like it just must be such an awful experience for both the mother and the baby. And it's completely unnecessary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mother cows are being milked three times a day. Yes. And mastitis. Oh my God. Like, don't get me started on that because I, I had mastitis three times with Sebastian because I, I it's an infection of your mammary gland and pretty much any cow hooked up to a machine is suffering from mastitis. And it is any mother who experiences it will tell you it is like the flu times 10. You are in so much pain. Mm -hmm. You can your fever can reach up to like 104. And these cows are experiencing this every day all day because they're constantly infected you know you that's why they there's all the pusses in the milk because they have infections in their udders and to think that you know i experienced that for three days and that's their whole life yeah. it's hor mm -hmm. horrific mm -hmm. it's also interesting what you said it kind of begs the question you were speaking about um that your body knew um what to make mm -hmm. when Sebastian was sick. So probably s some special antibodies, maybe yes. even the hormone levels yeah, went enzymes, up to help all him. Of it. Enzymes. So like we're drinking this milk from another species and we have no idea what no. was going on during that whole period of time they were milking this cow, exactly. whether they s were sick or what, what stage exactly. the breast milk was in. Not to mention it's <laughs> like hundreds of cow's milk. That's the other thing. Like the fact that this has become socially acceptable is just right. weird. You When, when you have a breastfeeding relationship, you, you understand how weird it is to think that we are drinking another species milk. Because if your husband or partner isn't willing to drink your breast milk, you know, like, <laughs> then what are they doing <laughs> drinking a cow's milk? Because my, you, you hear funny stories about, you know, I, we have a friend whose husband, they ran out of milk and he decided to put his wife's stored breast milk on his, on his cereal. And he was shocked at how delicious it was and I'm like well of course it's delicious it's mostly <laughs> sugar exactly but, it's mostly and then and then my and husband not as much protein yeah, as people think it is fat, and yeah. and my husband thought this was hilarious and then we were traveling one time and he had a horrible sore throat and I told him you know in India they sell breast milk like on at the market for people who are sick mm -hmm. and he's like really I'm like you should try it maybe it'll it'll help your sore throat it didn't <laughs> but he drank it and which is like he drank your breast milk yeah yeah which people will would be horrified to hear that some people think that's absolutely disgusting and i'm like what do you mean you would never like saddle up to a cow and 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 drink their and milk out of, yeah when i was training uh really hard this is gosh my sister 18 months before olympics or something um uh a, a doctor who uh was um just second like advisor to me wasn't wasn't my coach but but a trusted advisor knew that my sister was breastfeeding he said you know it would be really smart if you drank at least 16 ounces of her breast milk every day oh my gosh she and i met in denver for a a, a trip a conference and she brought her pump with her because her her baby was you know i don't three months old or something and um we were there for two days and she was pumping nonstop, and uh she was like yeah go for it of course i'll pump some for you i absolutely <laughs> could not even bring myself to tasting it. Yeah. I was like, that is just all sorts of wrong. Yeah. 
<laughs> and it's disgusting and it's just not going to happen and if I don't make it to the Olympus because I didn't drink my sister's breast milk yeah. then so be it I'm okay and it's like but that's it. it's my yeah, sister but when like, you <laughs> put them side by side which one is weirder yeah. you know exactly. like I'm not saying that we should all be like feeding our families our adult families with our breast milk but at the same time like why are we so creeped out by it it's yeah. it's not re- it's really not that gross what's gross is what we're buying in the grocery store every day and mm-hmm. and feeding to our kids multiple times a day. I mean, I was the kid growing up who would go on a run and come back and I didn't want water. I'd have a huge glass of milk. Yeah. And now it's just like, that's gross to think about, but also how did I consider that refreshing? Like, I know. No. And this one specific species, like people would also think it's crazy to milk your dog. Yeah. Which exactly. and then it would be really economical because that would be free. Yeah. Because you could like get yeah. your dog pregnant and they could have puppies <laughs> and you could steal them and have those puppies killed and then drink the dog's breast milk. And this sounds insane, but it's not because yeah. that's what we're doing. And it's cows. probably closer to actually the formula that w- we would need as Good humans point. compared to cows which who are what a thousand pounds yeah. heavier than we are um yeah probably more yeah and uh, right. and a dog is more yeah, uh, our size. Okay, so we're not suggesting anything. No, right? don't no, do that. <laughs> but it's just, it's a very good it's point. Very and uh, next time someone goes, I couldn't give up milk. I said, I'll t- ask them if they drank their wife's, if it was, <laughs> you know, breast milk. <laughs> yeah. that, right? Amen. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> Let me know how it goes. So, I will. Yeah, we'll bring it to the, we'll bring that story. I'm going to go look for stories to be able to tell <laughs> like that. I'm um, sure you know people. People get curious. They want to, when they see their wife pumping nonstop, they're like, hmm, mm-hmm. people want to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- um, <laughs> I, yes, I'm sure, I'm sure, but um, I actually now I'm interested. But you're not going to taste it today. We're going to not, we're going to move on. I have my pump right there. I know actually. you probably do. <laughs> We'll see you after the show. Okay. Um, so I would like to know when you switched, made the switch from well, let's say to veganism, what did your coaches, did you have any pushback from yes. the team and the managers? And Tons. was it when you went vegan or vegetarian also? Um, I didn't really tell anybody when I went vegetarian. And um, when I went vegan, it was a bit tougher just because the ingredients are sort of hidden. It's easy to walk up to a team buffet table and just not pick the meat, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, when when you're trying to avoid dairy, it's you have to let somebody know. So uh, when I did, yes, absolutely. I had multiple meetings. I was called in, into meetings with all the members of the staff and sometimes four of them in, at, at one time, you know, including the team doctor, trainer, coach, just all saying, you know, you're one because I was so young. You're a growing kid. You know, you you need this to grow. You're not going to keep growing. False. And two, you're you're going to you won't be strong enough. You're you're going to lose strength on the field. And False. not only did I not stop growing, I continued to be strong, but also I recovered faster. That was the number one thing was that I I noticed I recovered faster. Um, and as it said, as you saw in the video, quickly the staff realized that I was recovering faster too and, and that I was not suffering. But I, I think I want to want to believe that their skepticism had a bit to do with how young I was, you know, that she's rebelling or something like that. And, and especially because at that time, my main reason was um, cruelty to animals. It, it wasn't as much about health because there wasn't as much information yet about that, about health and performance. Um, and optimizing your performance with the plant-based diet. But it was only a few years before that started to come out. And then that added to my why. And do you think now they would react the same way if a 17-year-old soccer player on their team became mm. vegan? Um, no, I don't think they would. I think maybe they're, they would be concerned that um, they did it right, that they did it properly, because there is a, way to, a right way and a wrong way to go about it. As we said, it needs to be well-planned, as, yeah. as, as any diet does. Yeah. As, any, as any diet does. Um, so I think that that might be a legitimate concern, but I think the idea um, that it's impossible, I, I don't think many people believe that anymore. There's just so many good examples of professional athletes that are thriving on plant-based diet. There was none of that. I knew mm-hmm. my teammate who at the time when I went vegan was no longer on the team and Brendan Brazier. Those were the athletes that I knew that were on plant-based diets. But for me, they were enough. I saw them thriving. I knew that they could do it. They didn't die. So they're I, still living I too. knew, yeah, they're still alive. <laughs> they're not. So I, I knew that I would be fine. 
<laughs> Brendan Brazier, by the way, is a was a professional triathlete, and he is the founder of the uh, nutrition company Vega. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and um, author of Thrive, Thrive, yeah, yeah, which was the book. first book I book. ever read. Oh. Yeah, about about a plant based mm-hmm. diet was the Thrive Diet, and he was living in Vancouver at the same time, and so I I knew of him, and he was really kind of the beacon <laughs> for for plant the plant based yeah, athlete yeah. at the time. Still is, and yeah. We, uh, you mentioned um, that your massage therapist therapist specifically noticed a real difference mm-hmm. in what she could feel in your muscles and your yeah. body, which is intense. She said, "I think the gunk is out from yeah. when for when you went um, when you dro- when you dropped the dairy, um, but you had already dropped the meat." But can you expound on that? Like, yeah, this so um, <clears throat> soccer is an endurance sport. So f- regular flushes are, are very common. So almost every day, you know, she would be working on, on me to, to flush out my muscles. And she, From lactic acid. Yeah, yeah, and, and just loosen you up. And she would, she said after a few weeks, she was like, you know, have you noticed our appointments are much shorter? And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, it's just your body is more efficient flushing out mm-hmm. the gunk that mm-hmm. was the word she used and and just I mean if you think about it, it it absolutely makes sense there's just there's less sludge for your body to work through so it's just all of those processes happen a lot quicker mm-hmm. and she could tell and I knew I could tell based in my recovery I felt better faster but it was just as I said in the video very validating to hear that somebody else could tell and especially somebody who was so hands-on they had their hands on my body and they they could see a difference Mm-hmm. Your, fl- your inflammatory markers probably yeah. dropped oh, considerably, sure. and so she just wasn't feeling all that mush of mm-hmm. inflammation anymore. You're mm-hmm. married to a professional, a- an ex-professional mm-hmm. athlete, too, Ricky Romero, who used to be the pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. Yep. What is he? What does he eat, and and how was that evolution for him? So, um, his diet has changed drastically since we met. When we met, he didn't know what vegan meant. And when I told him I was vegan, we were out at a restaurant I on our first date. I think a lot of baseball date. players don't know what a spinach is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Fish, yeah. Baseball's got a long way to go when it comes to nutrition. But, um, but yeah. there's six dairy-free Dodgers just announced, yeah. like, you know, earlier this yeah. year. So. Yeah. That's, it's, I mean, everything is changing. Yeah. Yeah. But um, for him, and he's, you know, Mexican-American, carne asada is, is what you have on a Friday night with the, with the family. And um, his his parents grew up drinking milk and and they're healthy and their thought is well we did it and we're fine you know so um he he's not a hundred percent plant-based he's probably about 90 percent because i do all the cooking so you know by proxy he's (laughs) he's plant-based um and he's fully open to us raising our children plant-based which is wonderful um that kind of that that makes a big difference that there's no battle there in in any way shape or form um but just as far as his diet just eating more vegetables or some at all (laughs) you know he went from eating none to his plant his plate being mostly um grains or or veggies and so for him he's seen a big difference he says all the time he wishes that he had met me earlier in his career because he knows his career would have would have been longer he says it all the time he says the number one thing if he could talk to young baseball players is is the impact uh, that your diet has and and how large of a component that it is um in your performance so he's he's seen the light i think (laughs) well maybe through his podcast he can he can uh he He, he has his own he keeps bugging me to be a guest so i I think sometime in the night it's (gasps) i mean i just have to walk upstairs to be in our house to be (laughs) on so it's not really that is that far but um, so I think I'll, I'll be a guest in the next few weeks on there, and hopefully we can chat about that, too. <laughs> well, start talking about breast milk again on yeah. the show, and I know he'll get a lot of <laughs> <I> listeners. <laughs> listeners will like, yeah. The podcast being Let's Go Ricky Rock, yeah. <laughs> in case you guys want to listen. Because he focuses on um, transformative stories yep. and, 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 and tough histories that some of these players have had that mm-hmm. maybe have never been talked about before. So it It's sounds- all about the person behind the athlete. Oh, that sounds, really great. Cool. sounds mm-hmm. great. So you're a nutritionist, mm-hmm. is that right? In mm-hmm. private practice. Yeah. So do you work solely uh, with people who want to go plant based or who are already plant based? Um, I don't. I don't turn anybody away, but I definitely encourage everybody to eat a more plant based diet. If not, go completely plant based. It it almost happens naturally because so many of my clients 
are experiencing issues with dairy and whether they know it or not they we've done a lot of i've had a lot of situations where we get the blood test back and it's like dairy is the culprit and i'm never surprised but some people but are absolutely what you mean shocked. By that. It, it shows that they have an intolerance or yeah, an, an allergy IgG or food sensitivity okay yeah can so so i can me? i can test for igg food sensitivity so um these you know they don't always show up it's a delayed response so it doesn't always show up immediately after so that's why it's so hard to tell sometimes because it can be anywhere from two to 28 days where you're experiencing a reaction to this food and, and dairy isn't one of the number one foods that that causes um an igg food response so um but it's like number five right so <clears throat> it's up there yeah it's very high it's up high. there There's yeah soy corn what what wheat nuts yeah yeah it's it yeah. it varies completely i mean it's they're they're definitely the most common ones but then sometimes people have these crazy outliers where it's like whoa asparagus is like sure. off the charts for me but mm. one of the most common ones that i see is dairy because a lot of people dairy and wheat usually are, are the two most common that i see um and a lot of people they already know you know they're like well i don't always feel great after i have ice cream but it helps so much to have the information on paper and to have the, the results right there in front of them. And, and the, the clients that I have had that have made a complete switch have, you know, seen vast improvements. I have one who for 20 years was experiencing skin issues and was on round after round of antibiotics for her skin issues. And since she's taken out dairy, has not had a single um, flare up. Wow. Yeah. Was it like acne or like eczema? Rashes. Or rash? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Crazy ra itchy rashes um, that she thought were related to stress, which I think stress was a component for sure, but dairy was for sure. Dairy is the one thing since she removed, she has not had an issue. And I mean, you can only imagine the, the damage that she's done to her gut over the years of antibiotics when that was never the answer. And it, it m may be treated the symptoms, but not very well. Mm -hmm. And dairy was the, the one thing that she needed to cut out. What are some of the other symptoms? Like for people that are listening, they're like, uh-oh, well, I've got a skin issue. What are some of the other symptoms that your um, patients have had that, that dairy's been the culprit? Um, for a lot of clients, it's gastro stuff, gastrointestinal stuff. Um, you know, they think they have IBS, and then it's, it's really just a reaction to dairy. It, it, not necessarily even lactose intolerance, but this IgG food sensitivity. Um, and uh, constipation, diarrhea, mm -hmm. stuff like that, uh, stomach pain a lot of the time. But it, sometimes it can be anything f f like as much as just fatigue just general fatigue and you don't know why, you know, I'm doing everything right. What is it? You know, I, I eat well, I sleep well, I exercise and it's like, it's the dairy and it's, it's such a simple thing, but you know, it, it, for some people it's so hard to let go of. But as I said, having those results on paper sometimes is, is all it takes for them to go. Okay. You know, it's not just in my head. This is a real thing. Mm -hmm. It's hard for mm -hmm. people to change and, well, we know that dairy is addictive because of the caseomorphines in the milk mm -hmm. um, that promote bonding between mother and child and, I guess, between mm -hmm. human and cow, too. Yeah. But make it, actually, it's ironic. It actually doesn't help with the bonding because when you give up milk, you have more empathy for the cow. Yeah. And more there awareness, right? Absolutely. But um, so for our listeners who are trying to make changes in their own life, maybe eat better even if they've already cut dairy out or they want to help a loved one make a switch how do you do it with your clients is it slow and steady is it is it quick do you let them choose explain give us an example of how you've worked with a client well i think it 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 always needs to come from them you know as i said before you you can't force someone to go vegan and i can't force a client to make a drastic change it, it needs to come from them and it needs to be on their terms and it always helps for it to be their plan so sitting down and and consulting them on what might be a, a good plan but you it it differs for every person you know what is doable for them may not be doable for the next person some people are happy to cut things out right away especially you know um if they notice a result instantly then it's you know the next day it's like well I felt amazing yesterday well I'm not gonna you know I'm gonna keep this train going so it it totally needs to be individualized so if um, they say to you well no I can't do it I just love my ice cream on Friday nights you we you let them keep that and get well rid of no else? um identifying what are their sort of non-negotiable non-negotiables oh. and then 
um, providing alternatives because this didn't used to be the case, but now the alternatives are so good that you're not missing out. So if you can point them in the right direction of what they can replace their favorite items with, um, for me, and sometimes it's not, they're not necessarily the healthiest things to start out with. They're still, you know, somewhat processed. Uh, ideally, the goal is to be whole food plant-based by the end of everything. But if introducing alternatives that are, uh, you know, the lesser evil to the dairy version, if that's what it takes to get them on that path, then, then that's what we'll do. And, and there are so many good options. And, and really, it's just identifying what their favorite foods are and showing them how they can do them, do those foods in, in a plant-based way, in a, in a cruelty-free way. That, that's sort of the best approach that I've found. You have um, an uncle that is a dairy farmer? You come from a family yeah. of dairy farmers. I, I come from a, a family of farmers, all kinds of farmers, and one uncle in particular had one of the largest dairy farms in Alberta, and he was on the Canadian um, board of, of dairy farmers. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, so I, I, my dad grew up on a farm, and he believed that we needed cow's milk to be strong and so that's what we believed growing up as well and, and my whole family still is of that belief other than my um immediate family they they you mean your parents my your parents siblings? my parents and my brother are are more aware now for sure mm -hmm. what, does your um does your uncle feel like you are um part of the problem that is killing their industry you have you, do you guys have those conversations um we don't I don't have those conversations with him specifically, but other family members we do, and and there's definitely that feeling that mm -hmm. you know you're would, you're trying to take away my job mm -hmm. basically, and um, you know I I definitely have empathy for the people that have who feel that way and have been you know that this is their livelihood, but at the end of the day it's not sustainable and it's it's so completely cruel. And I think that if they, you know, there are so many success stories now of people who have switched over their businesses and, and gone in, in the other direction and they're thriving as businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that there's absolutely a way to do it. And your business most likely these days will improve. I mean, plant-based is, is one of the trendiest things in business right now. And so if you can sort of hop mm -hmm. on that train too, I think that, you know, your your business could do really well for it. And I think that if we can find ways to help businesses transition, you know, I, I would, I'm all for that. I, I think that, I don't think we should be leaving anybody in the dust, right. you know? Um, but at the end of the day, everybody's eyes need to be open to, to what they're, mm -hmm. they're contributing to. What I've learned from, um, there's a, um, an organization that is working on helping them. There's, there's many actually working on helping to switch over in um, A2PX, which is Agriculture to Produce Exchange. Um, look them up. They're doing great stuff. Um, but what I've learned from them, from their vast amount of research, is that almost all small to medium-sized dairy farmers are not sustaining on just that. They no. all have an another job or they have three jobs. Mm -hmm. So it's... It, 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 it and isn't, government and they get. And if they didn't get the government subsidies, it would forget it. Mm -hmm. And and she, her organization is specifically working on um, helping them changing over to yellow pea farming oh, wow. because it's the most versatile of all the pulse crops. And um, she has uh, three Amish farmers in uh, Pennsylvania right now that are going to be that the, the 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 pilots on 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 changing their land over to, to yellow pea farming oh, wow. so that they can be profitable. Uh, it, it, because they're not now. Yeah, they're they're, they're all they're all working two three jobs. Mm -hmm. and, and no, I'm sure. Yeah. How, how how do you transition over? Do you know? Did she talk to you about that? You, if you have, um, well, they might be smaller farms, but if you have a thousand cows, mm -hmm. well, I know one thing is you don't keep impregnating them every year. <laughs> That's a start, but yeah. wh where do they go? Do oh, the know? cows themselves. Yeah. There's, there's, there's issues with the soil, too. Like sometimes you could, if the soil's in, a, in, in good shape, you can change over immediately that next season, but some soil needs two, three, four years. So that is one of the biggest issues because what's going to happen in those interim years? But mm -hmm. the cows, yeah, what you're imagining might is they go to slaughter, but um, then that's the end of the chain. Right. Yeah. Right. No yeah. more suffering. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I understand Miyoko is involved with that. Miyoko, who makes the um, mm -hmm. alternative cheeses, is involved with getting farmers to actually make 
go to almond farming here in California, oh, wow. which is so interesting because they can still make cheese. Yeah. Um, yeah. From, their, from their product, it's almonds. I have to bring based. bags of Miyoko's cheese home with me when I travel back to me Toronto. Too. <laughs> me too. Yeah, I know. It's not available know. in Canada? <laughs> it's, it's, you can buy it online uh. from some vegan online retailers, but it's not widely available at, at all. And I got a lot of family members hooked over Christmas with a cheese plate, and now it's like I got to bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> then you end up you end up cra- I don't know what it is about cheese. You end up craving the plant cheese almost like I, people say they yeah. do with dairy because yeah. it's so extraordinary. <clears throat> yeah, when people say they just can't give up something, I say, uh, and because they love it so much, I say, well, don't give that up right now, but give up mm-hmm. all the other stuff you don't really care about. Yeah, and or make the switch, like you say. And um, and eventually they'll become less attached to whatever it is. They just won't. Well, and they'll end up eating less dairy in general, so yeah. they're going to crave it less. And they're, mm-hmm. they, whether or not their symptoms are gone completely, they may decrease and they might recognize, well, if I cut this out completely, maybe it'll be gone for good. And then usually that is the case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You talked about um, bringing food home for your family uh, up in Canada, but what about for your family here? You're, you have your own business. You have two kids. One is a newborn, um, a husband who, you know, you cook for, you mm-hmm. mentioned. So ha- what kind of meals do you cook for them when you're <laughs> busy and on the go? We do a lot of bowls, a lot of grain bowls, mm-hmm. just because you can just put whatever in it, you know, like whatever vegetables you have whatever's fresh, whatever's local and available. So a lot of grain bowls with So when you say grain bowl. So either quinoa, rice, um, and then uh, roasted veggies. We roast a lot of vegetables. Um, and then whatever kind of sauce we feel like for that day. And then um, my son, he does a lot of smoothies. Sebastian loves smoothies. And for me, that's a great way to get veggies in there for him. He likes vegetables, but he's sort of in this phase now where new foods are like, he, which is very normal for his age, actually. Um, so it's hard to get him to try new things. But, you know, he, he loves steamed veggies. And there's always vegetables on his plate, no matter what. And he believes that the veggies are what make him strong so he's always flexing as soon as he eats his vegetables so it's sort of just changing that narrative (laughs) that we grew up with you know drink your milk to be strong and for us it's just always telling him like mommy and daddy are strong because we eat vegetables you know and he um so he believes that and the the big it's it's tough with him right now sort of um broaching the subject of animal cruelty I, i i'm not really sure yet how to go about that um but as far as dairy for him that's a concept that he very easily understands because he was breastfed and he remembers being breastfed and now especially watching his his little brother being breastfed he know he calls anything that has cow's milk in it moo he's like that has moo in it mommy gross (laughs) so he way to put it yeah so that's he and he came up with that so that is sort of natural um he doesn't quite understand yet you know why we don't eat meat um and i'm does as i said meat? Does, does he see it yeah i mean he spends one night a week at his grandparents house and they eat meat so he knows that grandma and grandpa eat meat and sometimes he'll ask me you know like i mean like they're eating meat or he said a few times like i want to eat grandpa's meat so i know it's coming and i i it's something that i'm going to have to tackle but I I'm not quite sure how to go about it yet he's my first kid and and you know I've been vegan for so long but raising a child vegan is all new to me too so um I think it might be a little bit of trial and error but um uh, just give him liver first no (laughs) (laughs) then he'll think all meat tastes like liver well the only problem now is that you know he has chicken nuggets but they're not it's not chicken but he calls it chicken nuggets so for him he thinks that he doesn't equate it with a like the actual living chicken but so yeah. it's almost gotten so yeah. easy to be vegan in some ways that the for a child to differentiate you know between nuggets from mcdonald's which he will never ever have and the nuggets you know the garden nuggets that he has as a treat once in a while so that's sort of like a bit of a gray area for me but i'm yeah. like i said parenting is we're all doing it on the fly so even as a vegan parent, right. it's, it's a matter what they're doing eating. it on it's the fly. The first time for the whole <laughs> mm-hmm. the whole rodeo. Mm-hmm. Or that's a bad example, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, does uh, what are uh, I'll be the annoying person that that asks because some people might be wondering when you talked about the grains and the veggies and the sauces. Um, 
where how much protein is in that? Because there's a lot. People yeah, don't recognize there's it. Probably over thirty grams of protein. There's always some kind of legume in there. I chickpeas are you know hidden in almost everything I make. Um, and whether, yeah, whether it's chickpeas, lentils, black beans, um, the grain itself is full of protein. The veggies have protein in them as well. And then I try to use a lot of tahini for the calcium and the, and the protein in there too. So our sauces often are made with tahini. And then there's always some kind of nut crumbled on top. So, or hemp seeds or chia seeds. It's, it's kind of funny because I, I feel like this is in general, any healthy diet you, you're not counting. You're not counting anymore. Once you kind of get the hang of it, you're like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you realize that it all adds up. And if you're including a variety of fruits and vegetables and grains and nuts and seeds, you will get enough protein. And I don't think that it should require math to eat healthy you know, on a daily yeah. basis. Like if you have specific goals, say you're training for something very specific, especially if it's, you know, some form of bodybuilding or something like that, then yes, you need to count your macros every day. But to be a generally healthy, happy person, you don't need a calculator to eat your food. And, and whether that's macros or you're focusing specifically on protein, um, if you're eating a variety of foods, you're going to get enough protein. But I just don't want to leave without talking about a vegan pregnancy uh -huh. because I, yes. I mean, there's, yep. there's got to be the, oh, I don't know. That's dangerous. Oh my goodness. Girl, be I have careful. a story for you. Tell the story. Oh. And then what, what did you eat? What were your go-tos? Oh my gosh, you did it without animals yeah. involved. So, so you, I'm glad you asked because this is something people always ask. People always go, oh, wow, you've been vegan for so long, but you, you must have reintroduced me as soon as you found out you were pregnant. Right. And I w was always like shocked when I would hear this and no, absolutely not. And but I had this moment when I um, was in the hospital with Diego, my my second baby. Um, after I delivered, the nurse is filling out the form, asking me my preferences. You know, taking all my info, asking me if I have any dietary preferences. And I knew I wasn't planning on eating any of the hospital food, anyways. I already this was our second baby. Ricky knew he was heading home to make me food and bringing it back <laughs> to the hospital for me. So, um, but I still told her I'm vegan. You know. So she puts it in my chart I'm ve that, that I'm vegan. Um, and it's the first meal comes around. The lady with, with the meal cart comes around and she's like, here's your liquid meal. And I was like, liquid? Why am I? Okay, thanks. Just put it over there. You know, I knew I wasn't going to touch it anyways. By the third time of her bringing me liquid meals, I was like, excuse me, I'm not on a liquid diet. <laughs> and she was like, oh, well, it, it says here that you're vegan. And I was like but vegan is not a liquid diet. And she's like, well, we don't have anything in the kitchen. So they've just been giving you, giving you a liquid diet. Not to mention that it's chicken noodle soup and stuff like that, like with chicken broth. So it's not even a vegan liquid diet. But the fact that in the hospital, all they had was a liquid diet. If you put vegan on your meal preference, I was like, this is, they don't have enough vegetables. Unbelievable. Yeah. And she said, and she was like, wait, so you're vegan. And I, and I was like, yes. And she goes, that's so interesting because my sister was vegan for 10 years and she's pregnant and her OB just told her she has to start reintroducing eggs and meat oh, no. into her diet. And I was like, what? <laughs> like I, I had just given birth and I like hopped out of the bed <laughs> and I was like, no, that's not necessary. Tell her she doesn't have to do that. Like find a doctor that knows better because that is absolutely not Find the case. Find a doctor that knows nutrition. Just, yeah. They're out which there is, now. They, they, they are, <laughs> many of they, them you are. know, they, most doctors are not trained in nutrition, but this idea that to create a baby, you have to eat animals is just so absolutely false. And I mean, I'm proof I've, I've done it twice and they're ha happy, healthy babies. And I was, it was a happy, healthy pregnancy for me. And the more women that I can encourage, you know, some of the, 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 um, best midwives in the world encourage their, their clients to go vegan when they're, when they're pregnant, whether they were vegan or not, or had ever even considered it before, you know, and, and these women know more about being pregnant and making babies than anybody on the planet. And they're encouraging a, a, a plant-based diet. And for me, I was never worried about it, but I, it didn't take me long reading to, you know, researching on my own to realize, okay, no, I've got nothing to worry about. You know, yes, your protein requirements are larger, as all pregnant women, so your protein, calorie requirements. Yeah, yeah, but that's not hard. You know, a few 25 grams of protein is not hard to come by. Like sprinkle some hemp seeds and chia seeds on your meals. You know, 
in, increase, like have a quarter cup more of lentils a day. Like you're, and you're going to want that too, because as you said, your calorie requirements increase. So you're hungrier. You're going to eat. You're going to meet your requirements if you listen to your body. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yay. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm sure that helped a lot of people who were wondering about that question. So. Yeah. Thank and you. tell us everywhere people can find you. I love your Instagram, but, but for you. your um, nutrition consulting, mm-hmm. KRLR wellness, everything. So uh, my Instagram handle is Cara Elise, K-A-R-A-E-L-I-S-E. And my website is klrwellnessworks.com. You can find me there and all my information's there. My email address, you can email me directly. Um, and I'm on Twitter. Uh, I think it's Kara underscore Lang. I'm not positive. Okay. <laughs> so go, my, go, my, go to Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just find me on Instagram. That's probably okay. the best place to find and me. And your um, e-recipe book is on your website too. It is, and yeah. people can it's, download it. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's available on the Work With Kara page. Okay. Yeah, and it's amazing. Great. <laughs> okay. Thank uh, you so much this for being is awesome. on the show, Thank coming you. down and talking with us in person. Thank you for having me. I loved every second. <laughs> Thank you. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.